Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever. Oh. What? En français, s'il vous plaît. Bonjour, après-midi ou soir, où que vous soyez. Je suis Paul Clark, et bienvenue dans mon studio. Yes, welcome everybody. And today we've got a lovely little French scene from Provence in France. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Oh, I just remembered. Please stay to the end because I've got some exciting news about a river cruise in France. So let's go, shall we? On y va. Okay, so for today's materials, I've got some Fabriano Artistico 300 pound rough, lovely paper. It's got a very unusual texture to it. Any decent watercolor paper will do. My colors, normal three primaries, cobalt blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, some cadmium orange, yellow ochre, Payne's gray, sap green, dioxidine purple, cerulean blue, and burnt umber. Just two brushes today, number 12 round and three quarter inch flat. So let's start with the drawing. A question I'm often asked is how do I avoid the fear of the blank sheet and how do I know where to start? Well, let's look at the reference photo for a moment. Absorb it and make sure you understand it. Now working from photos is a great exercise and you can learn a lot from it but never underestimate the value of going out into the real world and sketch what you see in front of you. It really is the best way to learn to draw. Good drawing is all about good observation. So whether I'm drawing plein air or from a photo, I'll take the same approach. I'll start by simply planning out the basic shapes without committing any strong pencil lines. Now these are just guidelines or pentimenti lines, as the Italian term is known. They help me make sure I've got all the main elements positioned roughly in the right place, but I'm readjusting all the time, making corrections as I go. It's at this stage I'm also deciding what to leave out. For instance, I don't particularly like this metal footbridge here, so out it goes. So, you can see I'm slowly building it up across the whole picture rather than just finishing one area in any detail and having to rub it out because it's in the wrong place. Now I've got a video coming up fairly soon where I'm going to be going into this in a lot more detail. So you can see here, I've not made this building tall enough, so it's easy to redraw at this stage. Also remember, we're not trying to copy the reference photo exactly. It's just there as a guide. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get the essence of it. Once I'm happy, I'll take out most of the guy lines with a soft putty rubber. So off we go, just using a flat brush and some cerulean blue. I'm painting the sky and river very loose, and I'm gonna try and paint this in about an hour, so I'm really trying to be as spontaneous as possible. This is some yellow ochre, and this is where a flat brush really comes into its own. It's just great for getting those angles. Here I'm just adding some burnt umber, lots of wet in wet.
and let's add in a bit of cerulean blue into the drying wash just to add a little bit of interest. And here a touch of sap green. For the roofs I've got a mix of cadmium orange and burnt umber. Burnt umber again and here you can see I've picked up that lovely texture from the Fabriano paper. Now for the trees. And I'm just mixing in various colour mixes of cadmium yellow and cobalt blue and trying to do as much as I can just with this flat brush. And as I often say, splatting in is a great way of getting paint into your wash without disturbing the paint with your brush. Here a little burnt umber to get a nice contrast with the roof line. Here I'm dolloping in some blobs of clean water to force a few back runs. And you can see now that they've dried what a lovely effect they can achieve. Okay so now I'm switching over to my number 12 brush and a yellowish green for these trees. And then dropping in a darker value wet in wet. And again here various shades of green. Now this is a 50-50 mix of cerulean blue and cobalt blue but you can paint these shutters any colours you like. It's just that I have a real thing for blue shutters. And while we still have the blue on our brush let's put in a few further details. Now this is a good dark mix of Burnt Umber and Payne's Grey for all those lovely dark values. Again, always trying to paint in as few strokes as possible, making your painting look fresh and not overworked. A lot of this is what I call blagging it and just putting in suggestions of what things might be. I always think it's good to leave the viewer to interpret what some of these things might be.
So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break and a glass of Vin Rosé de Provence. And now for a second layer of that cadmium orange burnt rubber mix. So what I'm doing here is exaggerating the shadow colour by using a purple mix, just with a little touch of yellow ochre. Now I went into shadow details um, in my shadows video, link above. And a purpley shadow can add a real sense of interest and drama, even when it's painted on top of a dry wash. Here with a dark green, adding just a few splats for some texture. Okay, now for the water. And this is a little mix, and I don't mean the girl pop group, of Payne's Grey and Sap Green. Nice and dark. And I'm making sure I leave plenty of white for the foam in the water. Next for the still water, re-wetting with clean water all this area and dropping in some strong cobalt blue and then dropping in various colours to match the above. I then tilt my board to an angle of about 45 degrees to let the paint run down to give you this lovely soft reflection. While it's still damp, I'm just lifting out with a dry brush a few vertical highlights. So here I just want to put in a little touch of yellow ochre into the buildings. I just felt that the white was just a little bit too harsh.
here just a tiny amount of red to suggest something's going on in the restaurant. A little bit of detail with some Payne's Grey. Still using my large brush so I don't fiddle too much. Nearly there, white pastel pencil for just a few little highlights. White gouache or acrylic can also work well, I just find the pencil quicker and easier. Now with my fairly inexpensive set of pastels, not sponsored, I'm using the white to add some sparkling water. Now I'm looking at those trees in the top right and they're looking a little bit more solid than they were in the photo. So I'm taking a little sky blue pastel and creating those little gaps. And then just a touch for the disturbed water and a little finger blending. Now before you ask, I don't see on my paintings if I apply pastels. They either go straight into a frame if I like it, or straight into my drawer. So I think we're just about done. A little over an hour, but I did get that fairly loose feel that I was after. Sethini. Sound effects please. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Now, just for some exciting news, Margot and I have been asked to host a river cruise on the River Rhone, passing through some of the most beautiful countryside in France, including Provence. Now, it's not until July 22, so there's plenty of time for travel to get back to normal. So it's a seven night luxury river cruise stopping off at vineyards and pretty little French villages along the way. There's plenty of time for painting too, but if your partner's not one for art, there's still plenty of other things to do. We went on um, one of Amma Waterway's river cruises, I think two years ago, on the Danube, and I can honestly say it was fabulous. It was a gastronomic delight. And as for the wines, well, not that that really interested me. <coughs> yeah. Anyway, if you're interested, all the details are in the description below and I believe they're free flights and transfers until the end of this month. You know, I reckon I could be a salesman here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Please give it a go. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Salut! Bientôt!